let me click on this. Now I can see myself. So now I think I'm live. It only took me a few minutes this time. Hello, Luscious Journey. Welcome to G Quad Traditions. GG Naturals, the new grandma. Yay! Yay! Congratulations, fam. That is so cool. I remember when my first grandchild was born, they thought I worked in the hospital. <laughs> I spent so much time there, so much time. Big Rooster, hey, hey, hey. Barb Brownlee, welcome, welcome. I hope you're going to tell us that your five machines are working today. The Jewelry Spot, welcome, 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 welcome. And I think Gigi is a moderator. I don't know how to tell. If the, if the anchor, the little wrench is on, but I could probably tell on my cell phone, I can't really tell from looking at the StreamYard screen. I will try and see. Why, hello, sissy. Joanne Stevens, my sister, made it in. She couldn't talk last time. Oh, you are a moderator, GG Naturals. Yay. So, everyone, if you're here for the replay, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and leave a comment so that I will know that you're here. I read them all, and I'm so, so excited. So excited. Hi, Auntie Joanne from GG Naturals Homestead. Maria Graham, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope everybody had a good week. Let me see if, I don't know, my face looks so big when I pull this thing closer. Nope, not going to do that. No big faces in here. Unless they're on bills with 100 beside them. I'll take some big faces like that. Okay. In honor of Kwanzaa, you see I have my little attire on. Notice that my cowrie shell earrings I actually made myself. I have some beading stuff. I didn't make the shell bracelet, but I do know how, and we will be doing this together. I hope, oh, GG Natural says my face is beautiful. Thank you. You're too kind. Hello, GG from my sister, Joanne Stevens. Oh, Susan, a blissful acres off-grid homestead. We will be making your basket. I showed everybody the... Um, rope slash cloth basket we will be doing that crafty mom creations welcome welcome yankee sister home said oh she's working with that espanol hola mi dulce my sweet sister senorita ellen hola buenos dias todo so i hope everybody had a good everything i became aware last week of a holiday that I didn't know about. Hi, Shakira. Welcome to Create and Chat. Uh, Festivus, I was not, I knew about it, but I didn't know that that was an actual holiday. I looked it up. I know that a lot of people don't celebrate everything, but let's just celebrate being together, being a family, loving each other, the community of gardening. Speaking of which, you know it's colder than, uh, what did um, Hands in the Dirt call it? A witch's whatever. So everything out in my garden, it's on its own. I didn't. Eat, I waved at it when I took Mr. Hershey out in the morning. But other than that, I have not been in there. Oh, Raven. Oh, I am so touched. Raymond is my honorary goddaughter, Raven Blake. 
She used to live here in New Haven, Connecticut. I've known her since she was four years old. When her mom, hola, Lorraine T., her mom brought her to my house just up the street, and I had a huge Rottweiler named Hannibal. No, not after the guy who used to eat people, after the African general who crossed the Alps with elephants. Well, anyway, my elephant Hannibal knocked little Raven down at four years old, and I picked her up, brushed her off, and she's just been a love forever. The only reason I have a garden now here in my senior handicap apartment is because little Raven found out that I was in New Haven. She had a grant to help set up gardens. She took me to Home Depot. She got the wood. She pushed my cart around. She's still little, very, very little. She's still a tiny person. And she got the wood, she got screws, hammers, she made raised beds for me, she helped me sow seeds, just everything. Welcome, Raven, and I love you so much. You're touching my heart. Don't make your old auntie cry. Don't make me cry. And do you know the, the, the queen warriors? Raven is one of those, too. I had a problem when I moved in my apartment. I bought an air mattress, but I didn't use it. So I took it back and they were giving me such a hard time at Walmart. I could barely even walk. So Raven and her mom called and said, Auntie Ellen, where are you? I said, in Walmart, they had me sitting on a bench waiting for about an hour. Well... That hour was too long. By then, Raven and her mom came to where I was. They came up. They came up the sidewalk because my car stopped in front of Joanne Fabrics. They thought I was in there. They looked in every car in the parking lot until they found me and made sure that Auntie was okay. So I hope I said hello to everyone. Blissful Acres Off Grid, Susan. Thanks, everyone, for hitting the like button. Um, Raven, Yankee sister, lives in um, a nearby town to us, and she comes and helps me with the garden now. Lorraine T., or my gardening armadas, they help and share. And I'm so happy to have them in my life. My newest, my newest sisters in the area, when I can't get to where my mom and, and, and that part of the family is. Hello, Odom's Homestead. Crafty Mom Creations, honestly, she tries not to shop at Walmart, order online. It's a zoo. And there's nobody to check you out. There's nobody to check you out. So speaking of gardening, ta-da, here's my food. Everybody, can you see it? I bought some hydroponic lettuce and I couldn't bear to throw all these juicy roots away. So I haven't set up a hydroponic Mike's Creative Garden thing. I know I have to black it out, but it's still alive. It's still alive. I had cut it all the way down. Look at these roots. So I have a window full of plants. I have aloe vera, but we gonna eat. We gonna eat something. Hello, Growing with Hudson, and welcome. Welcome to Create and Chat. Every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. So is anybody else, whether you're part of the winter grow off, there is, for those who don't know um, about the winter grow off, people are joining it online and you're, they're growing. I think it's sponsored by Mike's Chaotic Garden. You can check out that, that site. And GT Junior Alaska grows. 
And the point of it is to grow something indoors from seed, from seed. I have my handy dandy arrow garden, but like the garlic, it didn't get planted yet. But I still have time. I still have time. Speaking of beads and beading, could um let's see how to show my earrings that I made myself. I've had them quite a long time out of the cowrie shells, but uh, speaking of books, this book is very, very old. I don't know if I ever even used it because I do improvisational everything. I just make stuff up. Oh, thank you, G Mama Grows, for posting the link for the WIG Grow Off 2022. I encourage everybody here to go check it out, whether you grow something or not. You can't lose. You can't lose. All you can do is have something healthy and have food inside for the winter. Okay. So this is one of my reference books. And yes, someone asked if I have read all these books in back of me. Yes, I have. Some of them more than once. Some of them are resources that I used when I was working. Or sometimes I still do some consulting or uh, research for friends and family. And these books come in handy. Plus, they are my friends. So, let me see. Maria Graham, you were making gifts last week. Let us know how your gifts were received. By the way, I posted a quick little video today. That video were, was part of my Christmas gifts for the family. I made everybody's gifts except my mom's. Uh, Blissful Acres, Susan Off Grid Homestead. So she's clumsy trying to bead all thumbs. Hello, badass dang. How are you? Welcome. Welcome to Create and Chat. I drop a lot of stuff. Well, I drop stuff anyway. And uh, that's part of old age. And these are, I'll take them out, but I'm, I know I'll drop them. These are some beads. My sister Joanne is a glass artist. And these are handmade glass beads okay they have purple in them and they were part of a beautiful bracelet but the bracelet broke in bit the dust i have the beads but i'm going to going to restring them and wear them because they're really nice they're really nice heavy and i just love them I love anything anybody makes for me. Hint, hint, hint. Um, Susan of Blissful Acres says people uh, think twice before giving me things because I make things, but that's not fair. A uh, badass thing that does look like a glass eye. That does look like a glass eye. Um, thank you, Barb Brownlee. Awesome earrings. I will take out my whole tote. I have a big tote about half the size of these big black ones up there and it's full of I don't want to make anybody sick it's full of beads but I do so much that I I try to stay on a project until I get through with it speaking of which I'd like to thank everybody who sent some mail for my birthday and for Christmas, before I share, will the moderators, Juicing with Jay, welcome, welcome to Create and Chat. And thank you for helping my channel to grow. Urban Gardening Chronicles, welcome. Um, and helping share my channel out when I, when I couldn't. I, I didn't know how to get the channel going. People dared me to 
uh, start a channel to get started. I didn't like showing my face. I would make videos without my face. I didn't like looking at my face, but it's my face. So here I am. Shakira, I don't know if I said hello. Hello and welcome. Um, this is a New Year's card from one of my friends who is a quilter. She was also a retired teacher from the state of New York. And then she moved to family property in North Carolina. And she got a lateral transfer and went back, back, back to work. I want to share with you some of my mail. I'm so excited to have mail. And I went to my post office box and instead of having my name, I got some of my first mail that said Jequat Traditions. I was so proud. Green Grass Grows, welcome, welcome. And this is a card from one of the neighbors for Mr. Hershey and myself. She buys him a coat every year. Actually, Mr. Hershey has more coats and sweaters than I do. I grew up in Connecticut and lived here until I went away to college and then moved other places. So it's always been cold, cold, cold. But I have also lived in North Carolina, California, spent a lot of time in Arizona. So I got rid of my 20 coats or whatever I had back then. This is a card from one of the neighbors and her cat. She also brought treats. Hershey hasn't finished eating his treats from last year. Hello, hands in the dirt. Welcome to the chat. And thanks for the challenge to get me to make really my first videos. It, it, um, hands in the dirt kind of gave me tough love. It wasn't like just go out and do it. It was like, okay, I challenge you. And I took the challenge and I've been making videos. This card is from Maria Graham. I read that one. This is a very special card to me. Um, my channel is intergenerational. My mom is 91. The youngest branch of our member of the family is two. I made him a pillowcase for Christmas and we had fun showing him a fish on the fabric, the sun, and he was touching it and eating granola with me. This card is from Sid, my one of my great two great granddaughters. And what's so sweet about it, she she's 17, she has a little job, and she bought a gift card for Nana with her own money. But one of the things when the kids, they they were learn they learned to make things, make gifts. But this one she bought, but she customized it. It says "Merry Christmas, Nana. I love you so much. Happy holidays, Sydney." That just touches my heart. That just touches my heart. And I will enjoy. <laughs> I will enjoy the coffee. Yankee Sister Homestead made a comment about you got your bun back up after the wind down. Yesterday, last evening, Hands in the Dirt has a channel. Moderators, um, would you please post your channels so that the people in the chat can get to know you and we can all get to know each other. But Hands in the Dirt was playing some old school music, the kind that those of you who were born in the 70s, your mamas were playing the music, which was me and getting down. One song, Brick House, I had to laugh 
because my son, my only son was about 13, a teen, early teenager when that song came out and we were going in the bank and he was sitting in the car. I was going in the bank. He jumps out the car with his little narrow butt. And he goes, mom, mom, that man called you a brick house, a brick house, mom, mom. Oh, he was so excited. I had to calm him down. He still gets excited and he still monitors my Facebook or sometimes my YouTube. And he, he'll he make a comment when I first got on YouTube. And he said, for those who may not know, uh, I am Ellen, Ellen Panky's son. And I do monitor her page, Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Carey license, Mr. Black Belt in Capoeira, a few of you, you, Gigi, my sister knows him. Yeah. Um, my son and my daughter are now my parents. So I just tell them when they're monitoring me, I say, okay, because I know as soon as I leave, I'm going to do what they did. I'm going to go do whatever I want. This is a card from one of my cousins who lives in North Carolina. Our Oki Homestead sent me a card. I'm so excited. Uh, she has horses. I used to have horses at the homestead in North Carolina and she has some nice little words and I have my second sticker. I have my first sticker from the bull's garden. He sent me some strawberry plants. I have a community garden and it was vandalized. All of my strawberry plants were dug up, dug up, dug up and stolen. And he sent me a sticker and some new strawberry plants. Hello, diversity love. You said that you were coming and that you wanted to make some clothes for your dog. L let us know what size dog you have in the comments. I have a dog who weighs 10 pounds, but I've also had dogs. I used to breed and train and board and raise Connie Corso Italian Mastiffs. And my dogs were trained for hand signals and they were pretty big. A coat for them, they didn't really need, need coats, especially in North Carolina. That, that's a massive undertaking and you need a bunch of fabric. Hello, Carbon Q. I don't know if I said hello. This is a card from one of my adopted nieces in Charlotte, North Carolina. She actually adopted one of my last county corsos when my health, I wasn't able to take care of them anymore. This is a card from one of my quilting friends in North Carolina. I spent a lot of time, so much time in North Carolina. My dad's whole family is from North Carolina and we've always gone down there in the summer. And it kills me when people say, oh, the North or the South, whatever. I'm nation, I'm national. I just, wherever I am, you know, I, I honor everybody everywhere. So I don't know whether I'm considered a, probably a northerner because they call me the Y word, <laughs> the Y word. And, but when I'm in the South, I, I, I feel like my mother says, how did you find your way around these dirt roads? These, all the trees look alike. Diversity says her dogs are small. Oh, how cute. A papillon, eight pounds, and two Austra Australian silky or Yorkie mix, 11 pounds. Well, diversity love, let us know whether you want to crochet something. That's really easy to do. Or we can make up a pattern 
for your children. This is a card from a family friend. I don't know if you can see it. That I have known all, 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 all my life. All my life. My mother's first job when she was in high school was working for his family. And that was more than 74 years ago. So... We've been friends for like 75 years. These are his family, his wife, his grandchildren. And it's just one big happy family. One of the gifts I got was from my daughter, my only daughter. My mom was looking at it. And this, she had a picture of it. She had the honor of one day this year, ringing the opening bell on the New York Stock Exchange. I try to behave myself relatively. A few things in the chat, some of the chats get out of hand. So yesterday when Stacy was playing all the music, he was playing some of the good old school, school music where you get your dance on. I told him I took my bun down and took my pearls off. I was getting a dancing all over my room. <laughs> Then in uh, part of my gift that gifts that my daughter gave me are restored copies of photos of my mom. When my mom was young, she got married when she was 17 and my dad is 20 was 21. And this is a picture of her, a rendered picture and one, let me move this water away from my good pictures, and one in black and white because my daughter likes black and white photos. Then this is a picture of my maternal grandmother, the only one of my grandparents born in the 1900s. All the, the three others were born in the 1800s. So she was a whippersnapper. Marie Graham says she doesn't have a channel. She follows the gardener. That's okay. You don't have to have a channel. This, th this channel is for everybody. You're part of the family. Hey, your girl, Lala. Thank you for coming. And this is the youngest member of the family. He's actually a little older, but this is a cup his mother, my great-granddaughter, gave me for Christmas. And this is little Mr. Ryland, the guy on the tricycle on today, on today's video. We ate our granola parfait together on Christmas. And I had a meetup with one of my friends who went to France this summer and she knows that I'm a gardener. Uh, thank you everybody who says he's so cute. He is. Oh, the everyday life of an OCD ish chick. Oh, she was listening in the bushes until she was free to say hello. Hi Nikki. And thanks for sponsoring my channel. So my, my friend brought these, this herb package. She was in Provence, France, and she bought this herbal package. And what it has in it, even bagged up, I can smell it, and I'm going to make my own. You know what it's made of? And it's been around for centuries, Herbs de Provence. It has thyme, got it, dried, preserved for my garden, rosemary, got it, basil, and savory majorum. I also made my own pumpkin spice with a bunch of herbs, ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, uh, coriander, and it is so good. When I make my ribs or pork shoulder, whatever, whether I'm making something savory or sweet, I make the spice. And if I'm baking a cake or something sweet, 
I just add sugar to that portion. If I'm making something savory, I look like my mom. She was pretty. So would you say, and I was, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yankee sister. I do. I look just like my mom. Uh, and the older I get, the more I look like her. We're just alike. And you know, like don't direct where we're doing. That's why we're always at each other. We are just alike, just alike. So G Mama Grows posted the um, OCD is Chick. Nikki's, please visit the OCD is Chick channel. She is my daughter by another mother. She likes the same things I do. I am so OCD ish. Everybody who knows me knows. And I like things a certain way. That's one of the reasons I love quilting because you have an excuse to do everything the same way, the same time. And nobody says anything. Nobody says anything. So that's about what. Uh, oh, no, I have one more thing for show and tell. And this is, when you live in a small space, everything has to, has to multitask. So this is a cutting board that must be, must be, must be, I don't know, 30, 25, 40 years old. I had one that was about 50 years old and had gotten waterlogged. So what I do now, I don't have a dining room table. I have a glass table that seats four. At mom's house, the dining room table will seat 10. So what I do now, I use my bed to lay things out. I don't have a design wall here. I use this bookcase. I put a sheet up and I pin things to it. Or I have an oak... Uh, you know the library card files that they used to have in the libraries? Well, I have a stack of them that I bought antique, and I use the back of it for a design wall. Hello, Erica Taylor, and welcome. So, Good Eats Homestead, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, what did everybody eat over the holidays? No particular day. What will you have for Sunday? What New Year's resolutions do you have? The garden, the kitchen. Erica Taylor, hello and welcome. What is what is everybody doing? Our family, wherever we are, there's always food. There's always food. Controlled structure is good. I tell you, I like structure, but I like to take a left here and there, and I promise you, you'll never be bored. You'll never be bored. Diversity, love, you want your indoor garden planted by Sunday? That's a good plan. I would like to say, I'd like to even have my garlic planted, whether I put it in water and grow some inside. It's, it's actually warm here today in Connecticut, 32 degrees. I almost didn't even, I actually forgot to close my car door somehow. I was helping another neighbor. Uh, she couldn't start her car and I started her car up. I didn't even close my own car door. Came inside, brought all my stuff in, the cart and Somebody called me and said, Miss Ellen, you left your car door open. Why did they close it for me? I had to trudge all the way out and go do it. What does IKR in some greens? IKR. I don't know what that means. Somebody enlighten Auntie Ellen. Uh, diversity Love will eat black eyed peas for New Year's. I will cook black eyed peas and bring them to mom's house. And I went to the store today and a ham fell in my cart, a spiral cut ham. 
and it had pecan glaze. That was different. That was different. Oh, but <laughs> a pork shoulder was on sale. That fell in my cart. And a fresh ham was on sale. It fell in my cart, too. That's probably why I forgot to close <laughs> the front door. I was too busy sticking stuff in, in the back. Back in the days when I was married, I used to go shopping and buy shoes. Oh, my gosh. I had a, 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 a shoe fetish. A shoe fetish. And I think I must have had about 200 pairs of shoes at, at one time. One of my daughter's friends said she used to come to my house and she used to love looking at my shoe closet because I had them with the high heels on the top and go, coming down to the sneakers and different things. Now, the shoes that I do have, I must wear like two or three. I have to remember to make sure that I change them when I go to my mom's house so that my family doesn't talk about me. And I have some, what are those little things? Oh, Mary Janes. I love those things, those geriatric things. And my family hates them to death. And they weren't cheap. They cost a bunch of money. Soft leather, but so, so, so comfortable. So comfortable. Okay, so I know who's eating. Getting ready to touch the screen. Not on not on the iPad. Yankee sister has all of her seeds organized. The garage growing station is ready. Now you have to plant them. Oh, and by the way, it's your fault that the avocado, I, I didn't say the, I said the, not my avocado tree died because you didn't take it home and save its life and put it in your garage. Barb Brownlee says it's 50 degrees now compared to minus 45 below zero last weekend. Good Lord. Barb Brownlee, what grow zone are you in? Gee, Mama still likes Mary Jane's. Me too. Me too. Is it too late to plant my garlic outside? You, Yankee sister says, all right now. Who else is diversity love is planned saving for an antique card catalog to save my seeds? I have the antique card catalog three stories from a library I bought. It never occurred to me to put my seeds in there. Oh, what a good idea. But it's kind of stuck in a corner with all these quilting and sewing and other arts and crafts. That's a good idea. I might have to, to clear out a couple of drawers for that. So who is cooking? Oh, welcome, Pam's Place. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, Pam's Place. Pam is a, she cooks her channel. She cooks. She's new into crocheting and arts and crafts. Matter of fact, let me go up. Diversity Love is into arts and crafts. The everyday life of an OCD is chick. Stacy at Hands in the Dirt is into DIY. I like wood in sanding things and making things. Last week when I had the picture of the parakeet, I forgot to tell you guys that I actually made that frame myself. I took two by fours to the community college, broke the wood down, sanded it, planed it, uh, mitered the corners, and made the wood frames. I, I don't have anywhere to set any equipment up here, but I still have my Dremel and a bu bunch of small tools. Those of you who have tools, and uh, you should get them engraved or get a Dremel, engrave them yourself or take them to a shop that you can have your name put on them. My dad used to have a construction business and he used to always say, pin pin, all tools look alike. 
And he's right. I've been some places where they had some fancy tools, scissors, other things. And people in, in one class, the instructor picked up a pair of tweezers or something. Said, are these mine? No, ma'am. Those are not yours. These are mine. Why? Because my name is engraved on mine. I know these are mine. You know, switcheroo, that old switcheroo. No, that didn't happen that time. Okay. <laughs> Marie Graham says, I'm a jack of all trades. You know, growing up, and you, some of you may have heard this story before, you couldn't say the word can't. And you can't is the word can with a T on it for trying. And you couldn't say you were bored. If you said you were bored, my mother would give us so many chores to do. I made sure I, well, I never finished the chores I was supposed to do, but I made sure I didn't get any extra chores because I had so much stuff piled up looking like I was busy. Life, 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 you know what? <laughs> My sister Joanne says, I put my name on everything. Well, when you have, there are six kids and all the cousins and everything. Thank you, you Yankee sister, for saying I'm a master at all of it. I try to master everything I do. I do everything I can, the best that I can. But I'm not a master of everything. But I'm interested in a lot of things, and I just, just, I, I, if I'm not going to do my best, I don't do it at all. Okay, so the project, uh, would anyone like to, Blissful Acres says she's multitasking here, can't, recanning, spicy wing sauce, and embroidering, she lives off grid. She has blissful acres. She has pigs and wild, wild livestock. And she just got a 15 pin embroidery machine. I've never seen one that big. And which means that each spool has a different color and stays ready all the time. I have a baby lock embroidery machine. It's actually my second one. I bought it when I moved in this apartment. I haven't even taken it out of the case, out of the case. All that stuff fell in my cart when I was over there so that I would be ready. I also have the um, cri cry cut cricket, all that stuff. Never took it out, but I have so much going like Nikki that I just haven't gotten to it. And I need to finish all those, all those containers above have 60, yeah, more than 60 finished quilt tops. I have to get the batting and the backing on them and get them quilted and out the door. So anybody looking to obtain some really nice quilts, let me know, let me know. And of course, family gets discount. When our parents have things for us to do, all of a sudden we find things to keep us busy. Truth, truth, truth. Barb Brownlee is in 5B6A, getting her arrow garden ready to grow lettuce, cherry tomatoes, herbs. She's working on crocheting an octagon motif quilt. Nice, nice, nice. I think she might be as busy as me or busier too. No, you know what? You all are. You all are. Everybody's busy in their own way. I know Stacy, hands in the dirt, must be busy today putting all that music away that he pulled out last night. I don't know if it was digital or what. I don't know how he found them all. We were bragging on him at first. He was playing so sl slow music love music but when he started playing that old two-step all that rock music we were up and about it about it about it 
fell in my cart. Yep. Yankee sister stuff always falls in my cart. Or I shouldn't even tell this part. I I have a Grand Cherokee Jeep. I don't like to jam. I mean jam. I'm looking at um, Yankee sister. I don't like to drive. I take handicap transportation a lot. So the back of the Jeep is like my garage. <laughs> I have a, a um, or, you know, one of those movers carts. I have to, Mr. Hershey can't even fit back there. His crate sometimes. It's so full of stuff. Thanks, everybody, for hitting the like button. Okay. I would like to invite you guys to pretend when you come on Thursday. I know everybody's busy and you do it to share love, information, but I appreciate it. And I would like each of you to think of something. If you had a relative who's no longer here, what question would you like to ask them? You know, I I have some friends that are younger, like Raven's mother. I'm about 10 years older than that group of sister friends. And we've been friends for like the last 20, 25 years. Uh, they're, they're artists and they come over and they come. I have an extra bed. It's actually an antique bed. And it's the, an old antique hospital bed where you could crank the head up, crank the knee up, and it's up high. It's an iron bed. I use it like a day bed, but she likes to come in and go in my room, climb up. She says, oh, this is so cool. This is like, I just feel so cozy. So when I downsized, I actually had, I lived in, um, the bottom floor was 1,500 square feet. It had three bedrooms, two bathrooms, living room, dining room, kitchen combined. But the top floor of the house, the whole 1,500 square feet was a studio. So, yes, I was doing my little two-step two <laughs> in my room. And I downsized. So everything that I have now, I just saved like one or two of my favorite things. These are things I just love, 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 love. I've downsized, giving most things away. And now I just have the things that I really, really, really like. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Yes. The everyday life of an OCD-ish doing the two-step crafty mom creations. Okay, so now, to who would like to learn how to make one of those cute pillowcases like I showed on my video today? Diversity love, loves antiques and vintage clothing. You should have been around when I moved because the, there were closets full, closets full of of clothing everything and by the way you can chop up some of your old your old clothes shirts and pants i i have a pile of some that's in the middle of bed getting chopped up Gigi would like to learn how to do pillowcases joanne stevens and mariah Maria Graham, Crafty Mom Creations, Diversity Love. So who has their journal, a piece of paper? I'm going to give you some measurements to write down. Hello, Cassandra, South Fulton Garden. Welcome to Create and Chat. So to create pillowcases, pillowcases come in actually three sizes three sizes. There's the standard pillowcase and the queen size pillowcase, which is, which is a little bit bigger, and the king size pillowcase. So we're going, to, you need three pieces of fabric to make a pillowcase. 
for a standard pillowcase, and please write this down, you need a, a piece of fabric that is 27 inches long by the width of the fabric. The fabric in the United States is usually 42 to 44 inches. Okay, that's the width of the fabric. So for a standard pillowcase, you'll need 27 inches. For a queen size pillowcase, you'll need 30 inch for the bottom of the pillowcase. Hello, Psalm 146. Welcome, welcome. You'll need a 30 inch base for the bottom of the pillowcase. For king size, you'll need a yard, which is 36 inches for the bottom of the case. Okay, so I'll repeat that. The width of the fabric is for whatever it comes in, 42 to 44 inches wide. Hudson, 27 inches by 42. We'll say just 42. If it's wider, that's okay. So, the pillowcase, 27 inch for standard, 30 inch for the queen, and 36 inch for king size. Okay, now the pillowcase that we're making is like a designer pillowcase. It's fancier than any you will buy in a store. And you can cut a two and a half inch, a two and a half inch accent. I'll show you, I'll pick it up in a minute when we go to the machine. So no matter what size pillowcase you're making, you want to cut a two and a half inch, two and a half inch strip. I'll show you what you're going to do with it in a minute. Then, and you'll find different measurements at different places online. Yes, uh, for as Crafty Mom says, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can sew this pillowcase by hand. If you have a serger, you can use a serger. Yes, Hudson, 27 inch for standard, 30 inch for a queen pillowcase. And then for the top of the, pill the pillowcase, the very top, you can embroider it. You can put your name on it. You can do uh, whatever you like. The, the original pattern that I, I had said nine inches. I don't do my nine inches anymore because I cut a lot of my own fabrics. As you know, a lot of the blocks when you get the stacks or the layer cakes are 10 inches. So I cut 10 inch strips. Then I make my own 10 inch blocks. So if I cut 10 inches by the width of the fabric, I can use that same fabric for multiple things. And not only that, you're going to turn, you're going to turn the top part of it inside out. It makes it much easier. Okay, so now you'll have three pieces of fabric. One piece will be for the top. One will be for a little sashing. Hello, Miss Shirley OG Gardener. Welcome. Welcome to Create and Chat. So, and then you'll have one that will be the base. So, now, hold your breath. I'm going to move move the computer. I don't want to make anybody sick. And Miss Shirley OG Gardner is in Ohio. Whoops. So here we go. I have found exactly where I can put this over here over here. So this is this is the 10 inch piece of fabric.
This is a two and a half inch strip. You can make it two inches if you want. The original pattern that I had said two inches, but guess what? You can buy the jelly rolls already cut. They're two and a half inches by the width of the fabric and you already have half of your work done. So what you do with the two and a half inch piece is you iron it and fold it in half. This is the 27 inch, the 27 inch bottom of the pillowcase. So I'm actually going to do this in real time because I want you to see how fast it is to really make a pillowcase. I know that you can't see my face, but I want you to be able to see the fabric. So anytime you're sewing, you're generally putting the right sides together. So you put your base down, you put your, pa your base down, then you put the little folded part with the raw edges together This is the 10 inch part, the 10 inch part that goes above. So what we will do is put them, this is the 10 inch piece. This is the two inch piece. And this is, this is the bottom. And you start pinning them together. I like to pin a little ways down because I can sew across. I might stick myself a couple of times. I might stick myself a couple of times, but everything is flat. So there's the, the bottom part, the 27 inch, the two and a half inch. And I'm going to pin all the way across. When you want to check to see if you did it correctly, when you open this part up, you'll be able to see, oh, how pretty. Look, this will be the top part of this pillowcase. This will be the little inside. And this will be the bottom. This is really a really pretty fabric it's called English Country Garden. And if you're married, you have a significant other. What I like to do is this. This little part here, this little part, I can make the whole pillowcase exactly the same, the top and the bottom. But say for the wife, I can put, or one party, I can put the pink in the middle. For the other person, I can put a different color. If you don't like the other person slobbering on your pillow, you have your own pillow. You have your own pillow. So, uh, burrito style. Yes. Yes, Crafty Mom. The burrito style pillowcase. So, through the magic of television... I already have this one pinned up. So what you what you do is after you pin out pin them after you pin them you sew along this the the edge. You sew along the edge. Blah, 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 just pretending I'm sewing. Mm 
you sew along the edge. After you sew along the edge, you roll, you roll the bottom up, like she said, like a burrito. After you sew it, oh, I wish I had a camera, ma'am. You sew it, you roll the bottom up. I've rolled the whole bottom up inside. You see the pink part? No, you don't see the pink part. There's the purple part, the bottom, the pink, and the top. So now I'm going to take it to the machine because I want to show you the one part about this burrito style pillowcase is turning it. So again, when you're sewing, don't forget uh, anyone who's new to sewing, don't forget to make sure that your bottom thread is pulled up to the top. So that I'm going to get you close as I can. It might be noisy, but I'm going to get you close. Close to you. Actually, I like to sew mine on this side. And I'm making a quarter inch seam. Backspace a little because this is going to get a, ouch, a lot of wear and tear. But I want you to see how fast, how fast it goes. I like to flip mine up over my shoulder when I'm sewing just for support. Okay, there we go. So it takes less than five minutes to sew across 42, 44 inches Hudson. Now this part, I'm taking the pins out so that my hand won't be in the way. And these pillowcases, the old, these are 100% cotton. The older they get, the softer they are. Uh, my mom has some with some of her quilts that are like 10, 20 years old. They are so soft. The kids, when I call them kids, they're teenagers. I gave them, they're my three great-grandchildren. I made them each one in their favorite colors for Christmas. Cam, my great-grandson, plays basketball. So I gave him one in with this same color on the bottom with an English garden and dark blue at the top because it reminds me of cool waterfalls and uh, so that he can relax before his big games. Now, what I want to show you is this part. Hello, Campbell's Creation, learning to quilt and sew. Hello, Aunt Ellen. Um, Miss Ellen is a quilter. And you can go to her channel and she's actually looking for some people to come up and sew with her. You will, you will like that. Um, crafty mom says she loves making pillowcases. So I am going to, I'm going to turn this towards me. Even though you can see all my stuff up there, it's fine. It's a craft area. 
So everything that you sewed is now inside this tube like a burrito. Like a burrito. So what I'm going to do is reach inside. I like to turn it back as far as I can and just pull, pull, pull the inside out. The one thing you want to make sure is that you don't ha ever have any pins left inside. This is the slowest, the only hard part, and it's not hard, it's just that you got to get a good grip on pulling, pulling, it's like turning a sausage inside out. And by the, by the way, Raven, uh, you guys, Raven, if she's still here, Raven is a certified sommelier. A sommelier is a professional wine taster, wine maker, and she has <laughs> been just galore. So did somebody say burritos? Yes. Yes. Burritos. And um, yes, Raven is a professional sommelier. I used to come up and spend the night sometimes at, at their house with her and her mom. And we would all go to the store, buy wine. Ra Raven kept her good stuff, the good stuff in a locked closet because when we ran out, we poor Raven would get, Stash would get hit. So I don't know if you can see what the pillowcase looks like when it's turned inside out. Now at this point, I like to go and press, press mine so that the design lays flat. Something you can do, and I found this, this fell in my cart today at Dollar Tree. I like to iron. There's something called finger pressing or using Hey, Gigi, you need a job as a sommelier. Well, I, I've been making wine a long time. Whether it tastes as good as a professional winemaker, I don't know. But this thing I found at Dollar Tree, and it says piercing and scoring tool set. But what I saw is the bottom of them. It looks like when you finger press, when you finger press something, all you need is something hard. So there's a plastic cap that comes on this end. There's a plastic cap to cover this, or you can break it off, or you can use this as a finger press or for ironing, ironing your seams flat. I also have a portable pad that my sister Joanne gave me. And for my embroidery machine, when I use applique, I use a very small, very small iron. And you can use a pot holder for small things for ironing. So I don't know if you see this. I'm actually smoothing this out with this little piece of plastic. But through the magic of video land. I have one already pinned and turned inside out. So look how quickly your pillowcase takes, takes case. Some people call it a burrito pillowcase. Some people call it a 20 minute pillowcase because truly that's all the time that it takes. So I always back stitch a little.
and I'm just going to go, oh, and you're sewing it with the right side, the wrong sides together because we're going to turn it inside out and make French seams so that there's no raw edges on the inside. No raw edges. Or again, you could zigzag it, you could do whatever, but this is just really, really quick. I'm just back stitching on the end so that it doesn't come out. I see that I didn't hold it straight, but I'm going to fix that. Let me see. There. So that you can see the whole picture. These are the nicest pillowcases. You can, whatever colors you have in your apartment, out your bedroom, your living room, wherever you want to make these, and they make such nice gifts. Like I said, they last forever. My sister Joanne has some that are, I don't even know how old. But she's funny. When I get close to finishing something, She'll say, well, sissy, who's that for? Who's that one for? Okay. So now this, I want to show you something. This little seam at the bottom was a little not not even. So what I'm going to do, because it's only the bottom of the pillowcase. I'm going to trim it so that it won't be a big bulk on the inside of the seam. Okay. Put my scraps in my handy dandy. I use this for trash, but it's actually a little ceramic vase that I made. But I don't use it for a vase. It was just clay that I pressed out with a rolling pin, baked it in the oven. You can buy low fire, bake it in the oven, and then glaze it. Okay, so now, guess what? It's almost a pillowcase. So then you turn it inside out because you want the seams to be I'm going to clip the corner just to make it lie flat you turn it inside out inside out I usually have a chopstick here I'm just going to use my finger there's the corner And there's a corner and the same seams that we just sewed we're now going to enclose them first I'm going to cut the string So, Miss Ellen, I guess I'm doing a little sew and chat over here, right? So, I'm flattening the seam down. I'm just using my hand instead of an iron. Why? Because I'm being lazy, just so that I can show you guys. But I'm really kind of picky about ironing things. One thing about quilting, it's like tailoring or making good clothes. You want it to look nice and lie flat. 
you will iron. My ironing board is always up, always up. Do I iron my clothes? No, but I always iron my quilts. <laughs> I always iron my quilt. So now I'm just pinning, sticking a few pins just so that I can keep the fabric from raveling. And I'm so excited to show you this because this is a finished pillowcase. It might even have to go for a housewarming present somewhere. Okay, so now I'll bring you back closer again. So that you could say, normally in quilting you use a fourth inch stitch, but I like making these seams a little wider because the seam underneath won't show through. And always clip your your ends. I see so, so many quilts and things with all these loose strings hanging out. And then you have to go back and try to find them. That drives me crazy. I just, I, I clip as I go. Put that down so that you can see. Trying to keep my hands out of the way. No pens. So there's like about another 30, 30, 30 seconds and this will be finished. Just want to make sure I get the pins out. You leave your needle down when you turn the corner. Take the pin out. Backstitch a little on the end. And ta-da! I don't think we've been 20 minutes. Clip the end. Take the pin out. Turn it right side out. And voila! Here is a beautiful finished pillowcase. This is not the way I really fold it for the linen closet. My mom was very particular about how we folded towels and sheets and stuff for the linen closet. And Ta-da! Look at the pillowcase. So, so hello, African Dream, and welcome. I know it's the middle of the night over there. Hello, Kenyatta's journey. And anyone that I missed, I apologize. I was trying to show this, but wouldn't this be a good gift for a giveaway as well? Wouldn't this be a good giveaway? So, everybody, do you have any questions you'd like to ask about the pillowcase or about anything that we talked about over here? Yankee Sister Homestead, I know. It's your colors, purple. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. 
So, good morning, African Dreaming. I, I appreciate you coming here. They're in Tanzania. They are a young couple originally from Texas. They now live in Tanzania and they call themselves being country in another country. By the way, this little this little frog up here, this little pincushion was made by one of my subscribers and sent to me before I even had a a, a channel. So thanks everybody for coming. And next, next week we will have another project. Thank you, diversity. I like praying, reading Psalm 35. Campbell's creation as a, a Christian channel. She does love to pray and quilt and sew. Yes. To anyone I may have missed, it's late. Oh, thank you. Thank you, April and Mr. J. Okay, if you have any questions. Oh, yes, by the way, it's hard for me to try to, to, to um, see questions uh, reading quickly. And I'm not trying to... I throw myself on the mercy of the court. I, I'm totally, I only have vision in one eye. I'm totally blind in, in one eye. And my, my depth perception is off. So sometimes I don't see things moving up and down. Thank you, Gigi's Natural. Thor thoroughly enjoy Campbell's creation. Would love to learn how to make them. And I will do maybe a slow video with better better filming videography uh, maria graham you're going to make one this week if you have any questions just email me ellen panky at gmail oh i can put that up there anybody that has a um i think i'm trying to the, my email is ellen panky at gmail.com i do have a cash app not for myself. I actually make quilts of valor. This year for my birthday a month ago, on uh, those of you on Facebook, you may have noticed that I, I donated to quilts of valor. I donated cash because I had I was so busy tied up in other projects that I didn't get a lot of a lot of sewing done so i donated cash and i asked others to donate cash so thanks for coming everyone and i will see you next week don't forget to like subscribe comment i love reading the comments and share peace love and blessings all right everyone I should do it with this hand so that I could type with my other hand. Um, have a great evening, everyone. And don't forget the other broadcasts that are going live later on this week. Thank you. And visit each other's channels. Go back and look. Everybody's doing something interesting. Uh, the small tool, yes, Yankee sister, you can use this for corners. But I, I don't know if I would recommend this tool for you unless you take some pliers and break the ends off because the grandkids are there and this is like a stiletto. This is very sharp. This is very sharp. So I don't know. I'm going to see if I can bend it with my this Dollar Tree. It'll probably break right off. No, it's actually stronger than I thought. But you can take snips like wire snips. I have wire snips. Everybody in the country who lives off grid should have wire cutters. You can cut these off uh, or um, pliers, break them off. But yes, this will be perfect for turning corners. I just usually keep a chopstick on it, but I was turning some corners for a million other projects. Oh, and by the way, by the way, 
we were working on journals. Everybody should be journaling for the garden next year. I started some journals with mud cloth. These are different colors of mud cloth. Different patterns. Because everybody needs journals for the, for the next year. All right. Good night, everyone. Peace, love, and blessings. Thank you for coming.